everybody, meet Brianna. I, I love this girl so much. She's my heart and soul, <laughs> center of my universe besides Jesus and my hubby. So <laughs> and uh, you know what? We had some, uh, we had a lot of wonderful people with us just a couple minutes ago. I'm so sorry we got, we had to shut that down. Yeah. Uh, to try to get reconnected here because we had a little technical issue with our audio, but but here we are, and uh, we might be starting a little raw, but uh, I'm so glad <laughs> you've joined us, and I'm I'm kind of missing some of who's joined us here, so my apologies. Uh, somebody said you're my double. Woohoo! She loves to, she loves I'll, to hear that. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, thank you guys for joining in with us. We, uh, we just want to share from our hearts today yeah. with you about some of our journey because um, we know what it looks like to experience God's faithfulness in the midst of trauma, mm -hmm. in the midst of a terrible mess. When, you know, our lives, when they, when they look really messy, Sometimes we feel a lot of self-condemnation, and I know I grew up in kind of that, that mindset where I felt like I had let God down. And, you know, you know, it was just more of that kind of performance, a little bit legalistic mindset that um, I had to pluck all the weeds out of my garden and keep it, you know, pristine and clean and, and well-watered for God. And, and while we should be stewards and tending our garden, so to speak, in the, the matters of our lives, um, I just, our heart and soul today, Brianna's and mine, is for people to understand that Jesus is the one who is pursuing us. Mm -hmm. And he is the one that brings anything good to the surface. He's the one forming all those good things and all that fruit that is, uh, you know, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Lord. It's not something that we can conjure up uh, in our own, uh, in our own doing. We're all born into this broken world, and humanity is broken. We were fractured from the fall, and uh, meaning it, it all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And so, you know, what we have experienced is to have to acknowledge that brokenness and sometimes that's the hardest thing don't you think brianna to acknowledge the brokenness in our lives when we set out to do our best mm -hmm. but to have to face those things that are really painful to face and then invite the lord into that mm -hmm. that is the the journey that is the process and I think that's really kind of the bottom line of what we want you to hear today. And before we get into some conversation, you know, I've, I've shared with you, Bree, and I call you Bree. When you were little, we, we, we'd say uh, Breezy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you used to get teased, Easy Breezy Beautiful Cover Girl. Yeah, <laughs> now, when that now, was... like <laughs> now we'll take it, right? Yeah. Um, but and I, don't want, I forgot my glasses, but um, there is... A, a, a scripture in the Psalms in 145, and it says, one generation shall praise thy works to another mm -hmm. and shall declare thy mighty acts. And, oh my goodness, isn't that what we do every day? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and what we're doing right now is we are declaring the mighty works of Jesus, the mighty works of our Father God, the mighty works of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, how they relate to one another, we are learning to relate to one another mm -hmm. and mirror that relationship in our own relationship as he bears fruit and his image grows, is restored in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we know that the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And that he, he always has his own plan to try to sabotage us. And you and I have certainly walked through those valleys we still walk through i mean as human beings we're all going to face that every day yeah but you and i have faced tremendous uh, hardships we've gone through some major traumas in our lives mm -hmm. and you know it's it's real easy to to listen to the narrative of the enemy in those times and let that latch on to our identity and then what that does is what i've called it is it hijacks us it he wants to hijack the image of God. He hates the image of God 
in everyone mm. because we were all created in his image. So, you know, Brianna, I just would like for you to kind of share a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, some of your journey. And, and let's just talk about how relationships can be so uh, divided and um, attacked, assaulted um, by the works of the enemy. And it's through usually through our wounds right. and the way we wound each other. Talk, talk about that a little bit and, and your experience with that. Well, um, I think definitely you were talking about when you were growing up, kind of um, your experiences with feeling like uh, you had to perform and all of these things. And I, I think that for me, obviously we grew up in different generations for me and different and in different circumstances. Yeah. For me, my relationship with the Lord was always trying to figure out how to let the Lord father me being a fatherless child, like so many, especially mm -hmm. little girls are and how that kind of shaped who I would become as an adult. Um, and then even just with the, with the single mom and daughter relationship where it was just you and I for so long, how that molded me into the woman and the mom that I am. But it also came with a lot of kind of like negative things for me that, that kind of developed in me. Yeah. And over the last several years, I have noticed the Lord really putting his finger on the pain for me and mm -hmm. almost like helping me identify exactly what, why I was triggered in certain areas, why I was acting the way that I was, why I do the things that I do, helping mm -hmm. me understand myself because the things that we refuse to acknowledge are the things that we can never truly change about how we are interacting with each other. Like, I feel like especially yeah. mother and daughter relationships as an adult. Why can, do you think that is? I, I don't know. <laughs> there, there's always, there's always a part of us that there's something in us that like never wants to be like our mother in a certain way. But then for, for, for people like me, there are so many things that I admire about you. Yeah. And that I, do, I, I do aspire to be like you in so many ways, but I, there's, there's just always little things about our moms that were yeah. like, oh, like, like the way that you would, you know, do your jaw off to the side when you would like be <laughs> disciplining me when I was little. And there's like little things that just like get under your skin yeah. about the you generation like before you. Yes. <laughs> the, ge the generation before you. And you, you want to know who did that to me? Grandma. <laughs> My mother. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I, I totally get it. I but understand. I, I just, <laughs> I, I think that definitely you know, I was raised in church. I know you were raised in church. Yeah. Grandma was raised in church. Right. But that doesn't mean that just because we were raised in church that our lives didn't come without like extreme um, trauma and really difficult circumstances. Because a lot of times, even when you're in church, those things gr growing up, like especially for grandma's generation and, and yours, like you yeah. didn't talk about those things. Oh, man. And so, right. so I think that where my generation is at is we are like let's talk about this stuff let's yeah. have a healthy conversation let's dialogue let me understand you yeah. i want to understand you and i want you to understand me and then through the understanding of each other we have this like agreement to move on in a healthy way mm -hmm. and um i i think that a lot more people especially mothers and daughters and then fathers and sons because yeah. the most important mm -hmm. parent um, relationship mm. is the same sex parent. So you for me wow. are my most important parental mm -hmm. role. And so mm -hmm. we kind of either we either model ourselves after our parent, or we try to go the exact opposite, because yeah. we just can't even imagine being like that person. Yeah. And you're not saying that both parents aren't important. No, but correct. There, is a, there is something that speaks into the identity of that person. Um, as they see it modeled right. before them. I think that's what you're talking about as, right. as far as the most influential or most, the most influential. Yeah. Right. Um, because both play a role. And, and unfortunately, so many of us have broken relationships with that other parent or, you know, we have a skewed perception because we had abuse or we had maybe, you know, some people had an emotionally distant father right. or, um, you know, whatever the case may be even parents that are perceived as perfect are not perfect right. and we we make mistakes and but here's the thing that and as you were talking you know that i love so much about my mother mm -hmm. is that 
she was like this pilgrim to me that had, I mean, she was one of those people, God bless her, and she's not with us anymore, but she knew how to forge through, through like the the jungle, the, the territories that had been unforged. Right. And, and so she had the kind of courage because she had such a deep love and relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Her faith was so strong that she began to break the bonds of legalism. Yeah. And yeah. she began to step outside of the box and the container that she had been raised in, which mm -hmm. there were so many good things that were there. And she was grateful for her heritage. We're mm -hmm. grateful for our heritage. But you have to be able to examine that before the Lord and say, okay, Father, I'm questioning this. And I'm, I'm, I realize that this may not be of you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to live in... in um, in a compromised state or marginalized state, mm -hmm. but I want to live in the freedom. And it's the, it, when we, when we understand the truth, um, as the Lord reveals the truth in his word to us, and he, he, Jesus is the living word, mm -hmm. he's constantly revealing himself to us mm -hmm. in that relationship. Then we begin to break outside of those, the bondage of the mindsets we grew up in. And that right. could be the mindset of, an abusive system, abusive systems can also be in religion. They can be, um, you know, verbal abuse, sexual abuse. They can be just uh, the way people dishonor each other. And it, it, the list goes on and on. So, you know, the nature of humanity in the fallen state uh, can really get dark. Mm -hmm. But the image of God in us calls us to something uh, different, something mm -hmm. that's beyond ourselves in our um in our place of bondage or in our in our place of uh lack of knowledge right and so I, that's what i loved about my mother is that she was willing to step outside of the box and she humbled herself and she was mm -hmm. she would talk to uh, my sister and i your auntie cindy and you know she would make herself vulnerable enough to say listen these are the areas i've made mistakes and my parents made mistakes but right. You know, she, this is where I watched love being greater than the system. Mm -hmm. Love, real genuine love that comes from God mm -hmm. will conquer all. Love conquers all. And so we like to, um, we like to define love by our fallen terms, you know, love some people think love is lust. Right. Some think, people think love is just a warm, fuzzy emotion. Right. But love is really that ability to step outside of your self-protection mode, mm -hmm. to trust in a God that is bigger than all of it, mm -hmm. and to be vulnerable and to say, look, I, I am not perfect. Mm -hmm. but God loves us and you know I used to talk to you in these ways I, I remember some specifics when you were you know at that age where you were starting to really get social and just entering into like high school and yeah. I always wanted you to learn your own voice I wanted you to individuate because that was something I didn't really have mm -hmm. as as strong as you did, I, I, I did in some ways, but I, I wanted you to have a real strong sense of who you were and your voice, even though I was still coming out of a lot of the systems of abuse and mm -hmm. things that I had a lot of confusion in my own life. So I could only speak into your life what I had received. But I did know enough to say, I'm going to have a conversation with her whenever you there was one day when you were, you were putting something on that, you know, wasn't it, it was not not representing modesty per, per, uh, particularly, and you were a good girl. You you weren't a little party. Not girl like this thing. lovely turtleneck that I have on today. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and I just remember talking to you and just saying, you know, what do you think that you know? How do you want to be perceived right. by by boys and and by the people that you you know that you interact with in school? And you agreed, and and it was like we reached the heart of the matter and then you took it upon yourself to, um, to modify and to change things up. And, and I was just really proud of you. Um, where do you think that young mothers are specifically in, in this era, in this day and age, because we've got so many, um, just so many challenges and issues that we're dealing with on, 
on a, a cultural level, a social level, mm -hmm. and families are dealing with a ton of stress, financial stress, um, social stress. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that the, um, the, the main challenges are for young parents today, and specifically young mommies who are dealing with uh, maybe their daughters, maybe their sons, you have sons, um, yeah. who are in school, probably public school, and or homeschooling, you've done that as well. Tell us what y your perspective on where we are in terms of our challenges and how you feel the Lord can really meet us and meet the needs, the immediate needs that we have. What does that walk look like to you? Well, there, I know personally, because I have a, uh, my oldest is in junior high, so I know that things are really coming at kids a lot younger. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the, a lot of the things that are being introduced now in junior high, I didn't know about until I was like well into high school. Yeah. So mothers m are, that have children around my age that are kind of growing up like at this height of social media and all of this technology and there's all these things that they have access to. We are frazzled as mothers. We are all over the place trying to make sure that our mm -hmm. kids are protected in that way. Um, and then I also think that, you know, and you and I have had conversations. I'll call you sometimes. They're like, I really need you to pray for this child who will not be named because they are, you know, we're, we're dealing with some like really like some heart stuff. We're dealing with lying yeah. or whatever it may be. And I think that what I have had to really well, what, what I've had to do is really just hand like that specific child over to the Lord and pray and then talk to them about whatever's going on. Talk to them in a very open way instead of scolding and reprimanding, having an open and honest conversation like, hey, why are you doing this? I love you. And not allowing them to believe the lies that the enemy is trying right. to give them because rejection and anger and hating yourself, all of these things start when they are toddlers yeah, and they, they mm. continue to fester and they continue to grow and get bigger and bigger until they believe that that's who they are. And I have seen this in my own children and to try and combat that with love and honesty and um, just like sometimes tough love, sometimes discipline has been probably the hardest part of parenting yeah my opinion mm -hmm. um and i just remember when they were little just being so overwhelmed with yeah diapers and sippy cups and i couldn't leave the house and i didn't <clears throat> i was so consumed with just it it was Why? overwhelming just yeah. stuff and yeah. and i felt like i felt like i was losing who i was mm -hmm. and and then you get you know they do grow out of that phase and they want to start being social and you know i think that really just praying with them mm -hmm. praying for them i pray for them every day on the way to school yeah. and i am so far from the perfect mother mm -hmm. i have had to have conversations like you had you, like you've had with me and like grandma had with yeah. you like you know mom and dad we're still learning yeah. as we go they didn't give you give you to us at the hospital and give us a, a manual on how mm -hmm. to raise you um, I'm still learning. And I think that apologizing to our children yeah. when we do something wrong Power. is yeah. so important. Mm -hmm. I, I do too. And, you know, I was thinking as you were talking about how that when they're babies, if, if you're, if you grow up in a church, you know, the custom is and the tradition is to take your baby and your newborn baby and you dedicate your service a like a formal dedication before the lord but then we step away from that and it's easy to forget what does that mean to dedicate your child it's way beyond it's like the the marriage is way beyond the wedding right, you know right. uh, ceremony right. so it goes way past the ceremony and we can't forget that that we've got to walk in that dedicating my child right. to the lord right. and so that means that you know in those busy seasons when all the things that are coming at me and listen the enemy will use those things to distract us from our children right and it, it it really is difficult to juggle all those balls in the air and then be able to know when to set them mm -hmm. down and mm -hmm. say i am not going to let the enemy have this child right and i'm going to get we're going to reach this child's heart right now 
And I, first of all, I have to pray for wisdom and I have to pray for discernment. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that I would say, you know, no matter how much uh, that there was wrong in the, the family lineage or mm -hmm. the things that were hurtful or hard, that was one thing that I would say uh, stood out to me that my mother did. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I did with you. And so the Lord will give you wisdom for the moment that's beyond you. It's beyond yeah. your wheelhouse, beyond right. your experience. And he'll, he'll help you to grow as you face it instead of ignoring it because you don't know how to deal with it. And I think right. that's where a lot of parents are right now is, I don't know how yeah. to deal with this. I'm just so frustrated. And mm -hmm. then we kind of demonize the child. And we label them like a black sheep, you know, this mm -hmm. one just causing me so many problems. And instead of hearing the heart cry, mm -hmm. because you know what, I guarantee you there's wounds behind that. Absolutely. When Very. a child is acting mm -hmm. out, there are wounds. There is a narrative behind that. And the enemy is going after their mind. Right. He's going after their identity and he's trying to take them down and take to take them out. And so parents, we have to be awake and we're living in a, a, an era where all our devices and all of yeah. our, um, you know, all our comings and goings and all the things that we want to mm -hmm. do and our own, you know, we have all these, we have our own unhealed childhood yeah. issue, unresolved issues that we haven't faced. So then we begin to react to these things and it becomes a tug of war. It right. becomes a power struggle. And that's one of the things that I really felt like God began to show me long time ago with you and I, because you were this, what I'd call the old soul child. <laughs> and, you know, I don't believe in reincarnation, but I, I, that's a term I think from that. But, but I would say you had, you were just born with this, I don't know, you had streetwise sense about yeah. you. And I was very kind of, overprotected and growing up and I was more naive, very trusting. And mm -hmm. so you were even better with calling things out with people. You could read people where at that time I couldn't, I'm much better at that now, but we, we would have these, we would get into these power struggle. And I remember I like, I turned, we were at church one day and I this stuff stands out in my mind. And I think you were like three years old or four. I don't remember uh, exactly. But I marched you into the bathroom because you were acting up and you would not behave. And see, I was stuck right. in my performance, in looking like the perfect family. I wanted us to, to, to have the appearance of having it all together. Right. The Listen to me, people. Listen, we're talking to you. Right. I wanted so badly to look like we had it all together because I was looking for acceptance right. Right. to my identity. Right. I, I needed healing. And so I was projecting that onto you. And when you would act up, because, you know, you've always been the kind to push back and say, I ain't having it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I marched you into the bathroom and I put you <laughs> over my knee and I was trying to spank you. And, you know, this was a time when, you know, that was really the only recourse. We, right. I've come to some different understandings of all that now. And there's, there's some much better ways of discipline. So I want to say that. Um, but, okay. you know, at yeah. that time, I just didn't know what to do. Right. And I was a single mom. Yeah. And so, you know, you're flailing around and you were so strong. And I kept saying to you, I'm the mom. I'm the mom. <laughs> and I, you know, almost had this out of body experience where, <laughs> you know, I could even see myself and how silly I looked going, yeah. I'm the mom. And it was the, basically, this is what I'm talking about when I say it was a tug of war. Yeah. And so, you know, the answer at that moment was not for me to physically uh, overcome you, oh, but, to, or, you know, but to reach your heart. And I was <clears throat> too caught up in my need to be accepted yeah. for me to even recognize in that moment, my daughter yeah. needs her mother to see something here. Mm -hmm. And to step away from my circle of, of where I was existing mm -hmm. and to get to, to pay attention to what was the need in that moment. And there were many times that I did. Yeah. And um, 
but I think that we, you know, I remember the, the phrase that a friend told me, a friend who was uh, in psychology, and she said, step out of the ring, mm -hmm. whether that's with a friend or what, don't let the enemy pull you into the ring right. because we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. Listen, we've got to understand that there is a false narrative many times that's playing in the mind of that person. Right that is either attacking you or that child that's resisting you, that's rebelling against you. And so, you know, we've got to begin to operate on a level of discernment mm -hmm. and a level of divine wisdom that helps us to navigate those things. Have you experienced that yourself? <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, you've, you've given me that piece of advice many times mm -hmm. when I am, um, you know, cause <laughs> I'm raising children that are, a product of Wrong me, will. so uh, <laughs> and then and payback. It, it's payback. <laughs> it's you know, it's literally like I was talking to a friend the other day, and they're like, "Are you going to punish your kid for being exactly like you?" And I'm like, mm, mm. "I don't know," <laughs> but I think that you, you've definitely given me that piece of advice on several occasions, and it's so true because when I what. When, when I am in those moments, I have very strong-willed children mm -hmm. and I have very um, loud children and kind of the the combination, it's like a cocktail of things that seem to go on all at once yeah. whenever we're in the middle of like, we need to get to the heart of this issue. But I have many children and I have animals and I have distractions and I have, right. everything's just loud. All the things. All yeah. It's all coming together all at once. And if that doesn't explain my whole week this week, then I don't know what else does. But <laughs> it really is trying to put it into perspective. And like, what, what am I, what's my end goal? What am I trying to accomplish when I am talking to my son? Because <clears throat> I feel this immense amount of pressure. And I, and I was talking to them just about this last night. Like, it is my responsibility to make sure that you are a good man. Like, you are going to be someone's father yeah. and as a daughter of a, of a father that you know and we can save that for a different day but right i do not take that responsibility lightly i am raising three little boys that are going to be men in the world who will go on and and affect other people's lives in a in a negative or a positive way mm -hmm. and so um really taking that to heart is to get out of the ring and then just begin to first of all calm myself because I, I i have almost this um mm, that's good I, I have i have almost this this uh <clears throat> it's like a fight or flight type that like like i i immediately go go into this like okay they're not listening right. to me and i i almost like play out their whole future Ooh. in my mind of like they're not listening to me now yeah. and then th this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen and so i think that it's just important to remember what you're doing yeah. and why you're doing it yeah. really get to the heart, like talk, get eye level with your child. Mm -hmm. My, my children um, certainly don't always understand everything that I'm saying. Cause sometimes it's hard mm -hmm. to break down those heart issues with a little kid, but I promise it's so worth it. And they're going to be a lot more open and honest mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. You did the same with That's me good. and I always felt like I could talk with you yeah. about things. And of course mm -hmm. we continued to have, you know, it was, you know, we continued to have ups as yeah. I, as I got older and as I started going through different and, and, a, and a lot more traumatic things, but the line of communication mm -hmm. was always open and yeah. you never made me feel like I couldn't come and talk to you yeah. or like I was going to be in trouble or mm -hmm. it was bad. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that just remembering you're dealing with your child's heart, like their, you know, their emotions and the core of who they are as a person. Yeah. And not just, you're not just dealing with like, you lied to me or you stole yeah. my wallet or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. And I think that's really kind of the bottom line of what we really wanted to be able to focus on today. Um, you and I do have a lot of backstory mm -hmm. and it's just, there's, it'd be too much for us to throw all of those details into, you know, uh, one little live 
session on social media, but we are planning to do that. We want to talk about the the real and the raw of what we've walked through. And, you know, I, you and I are people that have, we've just held our, our stuff for a long time. We've, we've walked uh, through such a journey with Jesus and, um, you know, they're both unique journeys, but we also get each other. I mean, <laughs> you know, at one point it's like, well, for some of the people that are aged uh, more like me in, in my age group would understand the song from Helen Reddy, You and Me Against the World. And that's how I felt at times. I was a single mom, mm -hmm. uh, really struggling emotionally, sometimes <clears throat> financially um, to just figure it all out and to still feel like I even had a chance at, at reclaiming what was lost in my life and yet still pour out and raise a, a daughter to be strong and to be wise and, and to have dreams. And, you know, we don't always do that perfectly, but uh, no matter, I think what we really want people to hear today is that no matter what kind of mistakes you've made in your relationships with your children, with your mother, with your father, um, or as a child, uh, that God is the redeemer. He's the deliverer of, of all the, the traps and the mindsets and the things we get stuck in. But he's the redeemer of the things that have been lost and stolen from us through ignorance, through wounding, through poor decisions, through, you know, all the, the difficult um, <clears throat> navigations with with family relationships family can be some of the hardest to heal with yeah and so you know i just want to commend you brianna for being um such a faithful daughter um and i i don't want to turn on the uh, tears here but it <laughs> you know it chokes me up because you know you've had plenty of chances to uh just completely walk away and you know, I did some really dumb things in my life, and and some of those, some of the the fallout of those decisions, because I was unhealed in mm -hmm. those areas, they they affected you. They brought trauma into your life, and you know, God has moved us beyond moved me beyond the guilt of that. And we've had many conversations. Yeah. Uh, I've I've asked your forgiveness several times on on yeah. different things, but and we can get into this okay. as we continue with these lives mm -hmm. we can talk more about these these issues mm -hmm. but i think today what we want people to hear is to be encouraged because it is it, it all it takes is just a moment to turn your attention to jesus right. and to invite him into the mess he is not afraid of your mess mm -hmm. he is not afraid of your journey mm -hmm. Listen, we, we're the ones that get so wigged out and we go, oh my goodness, so-and-so is doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is the one who runs after the one. He will, it says he, he's the good shepherd who will leave the 99 mm -hmm. of the flock of sheep to run after the one that's gone astray. Well, you know what? That's all of us. That is right. for all of us. Every one of us has these moments of, or seasons even, of running astray because we don't get it we don't understand and we're just hurting and we're ignorant and we're vulnerable but jesus pursues us hard right. he runs after us and he will find us and he will carry us right. on his shoulders where we learn to hear from him and i i just want mothers that feel and daughters that feel unheard mothers that feel unheard uh, or unrespected or disrespected <clears throat> that just don't know what to do right now uh, with your relationship. Maybe, maybe your relationship with your mother or your daughter has been uh, estranged. Maybe it's wounded. Um, begin to pray over that because God is the healer. And if we want healing, we have to go to the healer. We can't heal ourselves. We can't fix ourselves. We can't fix other people. We can't change other people. But to begin to celebrate each other for who we are as individuals, say something. Yeah, I, I feel it. You, you I, want to say well, I, I also just think that it's really important to remember that no matter what has happened, if, if there's a fragmented relationship, if you're a mother who feels like you've your decisions 
really affected your daughter. Like, like you were saying, there were some things that you did that affected me in a very traumatic way or, or kind of snowballed into something else and affected me. Even if something happened yesterday that mm-hmm. you Good. feel affected the relationship with your, either your mother or your daughter or your son, whoever it is, don't, th- don't think that God can't, can't use that yeah. in a positive way, because I will tell you, that pretty much since day one of my life, there have Mm. been so many things that should have either killed me Mm. or turned me to in a completely different direction. But my life has turned out so beautiful and it's not, it's not a coincidence. I'm not just here because, you know, it just all worked out. This has been a lot of prayer. A, a grandmother that prayed, a mother that prayed, a mother that communicated and apologized and allowed a space for me to be who I was going to be and continued to love me regardless and prayed for me and talked to me through things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, I'm here because of a God who can take absolutely anything and make it beautiful and beneficial to me. Yeah. So I just think it's important that we remember it doesn't matter if it happened an hour ago or mm-hmm. 20 years ago yeah. it can so good it can be turned into something so beneficial no matter what so, it looks so like. good yeah what you're describing is that how jesus brings the beauty to yeah. our brokenness yeah. we we don't get the beauty without the pain right and so we you know it's senseless for us to try to avoid our pain or run from it and bury it in our busyness uh in our you know all the things mm-hmm. all the the social things that we do or the materialistic things that we try to accumulate Be- the real beauty comes when we invite him in when we acknowledge him right. he's there he's right here right. and you know it's humble to know how much he loves us in our brokenness Mm -hmm. and to know how faithful that he has been Mm -hmm. in our brokenness to know that he has preserved us from everything that tried to um, destroy us that has tried to kill us that's tried to um, you know all the 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 times of abuse and abandonment and the things that could have taken us out I mean there are so many statistics out there and so many stories and you and i could be a statistic right but because of jesus because he's not ashamed of who we are in our brokenness that's why he came to give his life to shed his blood right because he knows we can't do it on our own mm-hmm. and so you know i know that we shouldn't go too long uh i know people only have so much time but we're going to come back and address this again. We're going to talk about more. We're going to share more of our stories. And we'd love to hear from you guys. We want to know if this has been a blessing to you. Um, Brianna, any, any last words before we go? Anything you want to encourage the viewers um, today? Whoever I, I, also, I would just also love to know like, if anybody has um, questions yeah. for specifically for mother and daughter relationships Good. for for um adult children or yeah. for single mothers who have maybe entered into different marriages where you're blending families as adults i think i think that that is something i'd love to talk about eventually um mm-hmm. uh yeah i just i'm excited and yeah. i i <clears throat> and, and i know that today was kind of a significant day we realized earlier today when we were on the phone um that oh, today has been an entire decade 10 years since grandpa your dad passed away yes. and yeah i do think that um those like milestones and, and we didn't know until i didn't even realize until i woke up this morning and we had already planned this um like several days ago planned to do this today and i just think that there are no coincidences and i think that the lord is going to do something really special i think that there's a lot of healing that is in store for mothers and daughters and and fathers and sons and and daughters and fathers Mm -hmm. and all everybody i think that there's a lot of restoration this year it's been a really hard this last year has been really hard for so many people and me included and so i'm just excited to um see what god is doing and I'm I'm happy that I get to do it with my mom. Yay! I love you so much. I love you too.
my girl. And you know what? As you were talking about this being the 10th anniversary, oh, it's just wow. I mean, we didn't even plan that. But, you know, as we both acknowledge that, and we will talk about this in a future um, live uh, soon. So I promise you guys, just spread the word and keep coming back because we have so much rich stuff to share with you. But I, I wrote a book and it's called Fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You. And in it, <clears throat> I talk about my journey. I, I share a little bit about my daughter, but you know, you, you want to be careful about how much you share about people. But I, I share uh, from my own <laughs> journey <laughs> of um, being sexually abused as a child. Um, but one of the things I want to say is that how God redeemed, how God healed, and I open this book up in chapter, the first chapter about my father's deathbed experience. And oh it was so precious how the Lord allowed me to pray with my mm -hmm. father, how mm -hmm. God gave him the courage to be able to ask for my forgiveness on his deathbed. <clears throat> and he also has given me the grace and the mercy to understand the lineage of abuse that he came from mm -hmm. and the things that he experienced as a child. Right. And so understanding that there's a bigger enemy, we all, I don't care who we are on this earth, yeah. all of us has been created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. It is the work of the enemy to, to kill, steal, and destroy, to do evil things in our lives, to bring us to a place of bro of total brokenness and despair and condemnation where we feel like we can't be forgiven we can't forgive ourselves mm -hmm. and so i really feel like this is something that the lord wants to speak into for people right now and he wants to to free you from that mm -hmm. and so you know what we celebrate my father today and all that god did even in the last remaining moments mm -hmm. and the heart that he did have in the latter years of his life yeah to pursue God and to, uh, to hope for that healing, right. to hope for that forgiveness. And he came to the place of knowing that he was forgiven fully. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for that. And yeah. thank you, Lord, for the work that you've done in my life and in my daughter's life, where all the traumas and all the lineage of abuse that, you know, is handed down, there's also the lineage of faith and Jesus and his love and his mercy and love conquers all. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you yeah. there is hope. There is healing available for you. And my daughter and I, we just want you to know that we are a work in progress still. We always will be as long as we're on the earth, but every day is a day to choose Jesus and baby, I, I just appreciate you so much. And thank you for your voice, for your your wonderful um, gift of communication, and for being who you are. I honor you. And um, I'm going to cry again, so I better stop. But uh, <laughs> thank you. Let's do it again. And uh, we're going to try to do this on Fridays. We may have to change schedules up because you all know I'm, in, I'm back in seminary, and uh, there's a lot on my plate. I'm going to try to stay committed to this. I believe that we need to, because these are the things that people are dealing with. And uh, yeah, I see uh, lots, lots of my friends were here. Let's say hi to a few commented. people. They commented, and um, my friend Tiffany, Sophie. I, I can't scroll too far back, but yeah. Oh, you yeah. my friends that were here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sophie. Yeah. Oh, Dana, good to hear from you. I've Jen never, Casey. I've, I've never she, done an Instagram live before, so I didn't know if, yeah. oh, Shelby's here. I didn't know if I scrolled, <laughs> if it would like stop the whole thing, so. Yeah. <laughs> Rhonda, uh, so many wonderful people. We yeah. love you guys. Yeah, love you guys. We Thanks. love you, love you. Thank you for joining us today. And um, we'll let you know. Come back again next time, guys, because there's going to be a lot more encouragement for you. We love you. Love you. Okay. Hey, we're signing off. Talk to you soon. Bye. <clears throat>